So this comes with Windows 10 Home. What the luck, come on. Let's get rid of that Windows Home. Let's get some Windows Pro. Copy and paste my code from the description. You can also get Office 2019. Just paste my code, woof. It's Windows Pro time. Righto, tell the idea champs and hoo -hoo, woo! I'm excited. Are you excited? Because this thing is epic. Now I get a lot of laptops. I can tell you now, I get a lot. I've reviewed many. I don't know how many. I've lost count. And sometimes once you've reviewed a new generation of whatever, the ninth generation with RTX graphics, and you've reviewed three laptops with the same sort of specs, you're sort of like, yeah, okay. Well, I mean, we love that sort of stuff. We want to know which one's the best, but it can be a bit same, same. But this thing, there's no same, same with this. And this is my general first impressions of it. And oh my God, it is friggin' monumental. First thing that caught my eye is, it's not that big. I thought this thing was going to be humongous, but it actually isn't that big. If we compare it here to the 17 inch Dell G7, all right, it's bigger and heavier. You'd expect that. Full desktop parts, 9900K, 8 core, overclockable, 2080, overclockable, full 2080, RTX 2080. And have a look. So a one hand job, mate. No problems. Now, I'm not going to say it's some super thin and light laptop, but when you consider, when you get that Dell G7, which is a 17 inch laptop with mobile parts here, not desktop parts, mobile parts, and I just put a surface on top of it, and it's nearly around the same sort of weight, which a surface is about 750 grams or something like that. Yeah, all right, it's not quite exactly, but you add a Mars bar, and you've pretty much got the same sort of weight between this beast with desktop parts in it and that. Dell G7 17 inch at that surface and they're the same way. It blows my mind. It really does blow my mind. I really expected it to be a lot bigger. Of course, you have to factor in you need two power supplies. You have a 330 watt and a 180 watt. So yeah, and they're like a couple of kilos, just the power supplies there. But anyway, this is my first impressions. And yes, we're going to overclock it. I'm going to try and kill it. But first, let's talk about quickly about the price and hey have a look here we have the xps 15 product page up Woo! i'll have a video about that out soon and that's going to be coming end of this month early next month that's the latest sort of update some interesting things i have to say about that and you can buy right now the alienware m15 and n17 the one that has the same design language as this area 51 you guys in the us you're lucky you can get it right now oh man i can't wait to get my hands on one of those these things look epic because this thing looks epic it looks so amazing this thing like it is the most impressive thing i've ever had on this channel ever like without a doubt so yeah here in australia 7999 this configuration Whew, it's not cheap is it but um, when you consider, I'll show you how much of a bargain this is when you think about it, all right? So this sort of same sort of model, I think there's a slight difference in the hard drive capacity or whatever, but the same sort of model in the US, it's not a K part here, but let's just spec this up. $4,149, all right? Let me go to this MacBook Pro. <laughs> $4,149. Is that a coincidence of what's going on there? But yeah, if I spec up the MacBook Pro, 32 gigs RAM and like the best i9 and whatever, Vega and one terabyte, it costs 4,149. And this thing here costs the same. And look what you get in, a full RTX 2080, a full desktop 9900. Yeah, you got to spend a little bit more if you want the K part. I don't know if it's worth it. If you want to overclock, yeah, all right, get the K part, but we'll find out how much you can overclock and whether it's worth it. But um, to me, this is much better value. I mean, what you're getting in this is like something unique. It's bespoke. It's something special. It's just you can upgrade the CPU. You can upgrade the GPU. It's just boutique. It's something special and this is more, it's more of a commodity sort of thing, this thing. You know, it's mass, more mass produced. It's, you know, this one ain't a mass produced product. This is more, you know, bespoke. This thing here, it is, I'm not saying it's a bad laptop. I actually like this laptop. It's awesome. But uh, yeah, it's not bespoke. Yeah, look at the price. So anyway, let's see if I can kill it. Just my quick first looks, impressions are just, it's friggin' amazing. I just can't wait to get my teeth sunk into it and just let me know what you like done. But first thing we're going to find out is can we make it hit 5 gigahertz? And no, it's not going to 
sustained five gigahertz. I can tell you now, even with a bloody um, 360 rad, it's nearly impossible to cool these down under 100 degrees. And yeah, this is a fan inside a laptop. It's not going to cool it down as good as a radiator and a desktop, is it? So, and they struggle. So let's just see. Let's go to overclock. Ooh, what scary overclock. All right, no profile. You know me. What are we going to do? Yes, yes. All right, fucking good. On my 9900K, it took like nearly 1.4 to keep it over 5 gigahertz. I doubt this would be that bad. I hope not. Um, let's go 1.3 at 5.5, see if it crashes. Now, it may crash. Um, cross my fingers. I'm not going to do an offset. I'm just going to do 1.3. And actually, I'll go 1.32 because, you know, I think it will need a bit more to go to 5.5. I mean, I doubt it would even get to 5.5, to be honest. Let's go. Yes, testing. Well, Emacs a go-go. You saw it happen. Crash. All right. <laughs> I'll be back in a sec. All right. So we're back in. We're back in. I've done something stupid. I didn't even turn the fan profile on. It's like on silent now. What is it on? I don't know. It's just on normal thermals. But... The only criticism I have so far, I love this software. It's the best gaming software, I think, this Alienware software, but it just takes too long to load. All right, so we're back here. Overclock off. All right, so we want to go to uh, full speed. So the fans are going to kick in now. That's no problem there. We'll pump that up to 5.5. We'll go to 1.375. Now, that's probably way too much because it's just going to get too hot too quick. Let's just see if it can be stable. Boom, look at that, five gigahertz, over five gigahertz, woo! Look at that, 100%, 100% CPU usage, and we got 99 degrees, 100 degrees, of course, it's gonna hit that 100 degrees straight away. I mean, you wouldn't even keep, look, if you're going 5.1, even if a 360 rad, you're not gonna keep that cool, no way. So this is amazing, 4.7 and stable, Oh my god, are you kidding me? Oh my god. All right, all right, all right. I reckon I can back it off a little bit. Now we'll cancel that. If it's a good chip, we might be able to do this. 1.25, no, 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 no. Two five. yeah, all right, we'll go 1.25. We'll see how we go. Uh, test, well, we're still getting up to five gigahertz. Look at that. Look at that, five gigahertz, baby, in a laptop. Are you kidding me? This has got to be pushing 200 watts or something. All right, so that's stable at uh, 1.25. I'll save that. I will apply. Yes, that profile is applied. Let's do a center bench. We'll do a center bench. We'll wrap it up because really, I really have to tinker. I have to tune that voltage in. And then we'll actually see how many watts it's going to be pumping. All right, we'll get the Intel Power Gadget out. We'll see how much watts we can pump into it. Now, I can tell you now, some desktops, I mean, full-on desktop motherboards die at about 175 watts sustained. I mean, they can do to over 200 for a brief period or something like that, especially if they're four-phase or whatever. This thing here, look, 210 watts, you can see there. So... Let's see if we can run Cinebench. Oh, you know the score is just going to be out of this world. All right, let's run it. Boom. How many watts we got? How many watts we got? Are we running? All right, yes. 9,340. 200. Woohoo! Oh, my God. 200 watts in a laptop. This is just out of this world. 200 watts. What do you got? 100 degrees. No problem there. 4.6. So it was going 5 gigahertz. Now it's backed off to 4.7. 100 degrees. You expect that? Yes. It's even going to do that with RAD even in the desktop. So that is perfectly fine and still doing 4.8. It was still doing then and still sustaining about 175 watts. Can you believe it? 170 watts in a laptop that is not that much bigger than a like a Dell G7, like 17 inch amazing 170 watts what do we got here 4.6 just drop down to 4.5 and what is the score are you excited i'm excited to see what the score is we've got 100 sticking at 100 and still maintaining over 160 watts 165 watts 4.6 4.4 4.7 now and what's the score with the score coming up it's gonna be good well, i can tell it's gonna be good uh 
No, we crashed. <laughs> oh. All right, fellas. I'm going to dial in that wattage. It nearly got there. Well, you'll soon see what the Cinebench is. Um, yeah, it just crashed at the end, didn't it? Just needs a tad more voltage and it will be good to go. And now I'm not going to leave you hanging. Uh, we're going to see this Cinebench score. And we'll just put it on one of the preset overclocks, which actually I'll have a look. What are the preset ones? All right, so we've got this preset one here. We'll just click it on there, and what is that? That is 5 gigahertz, 1.215, okay, what's this one? Uh, 5 gigahertz, 5.2 at 1.24, so this is the fastest, whatever, stock one. Let's do this thing. I just want to know wattage, frequency, temperature. Let's go with the inbuilt overclock. 5.2, it's, oh yes, it went to 5.2, it hit it. Oh yes, nice. And of course, it, yeah, it was over 200 watts. It's still doing 200 watts. Oh, this is big, this is big. 5.2, man, I was struggling to get that in the laptop. I mean, the desktop, sorry. Um, I did get up to 5.4, by the way, and yeah, it would throttle. It would just throttle all the time, this same part in the desktop, and it would hit 5.4. It would not crash. I had to pump a heap of volts into it. I had a 360 rad. You can see here, we're still using 170 watts. It's still killing it. And when I used um, more than 200 watts, it would just, like, throttle. Like, it would just hit 100 and just thermal throttle all the time. And, yeah... And this is a, a laptop, and it can hit 200 watts. Of course it can't sustain it. I mean, the desktop struggles to, to sustain that. So, um, you know, you don't expect miracles. Look at that score. Hoo, hoo, hoo. Man. That's good. Ciao. Love you guys. Check out.